Today, I'm going to be talking about 2.1 cell structure, subcellular components, and 2.2 cell structure and function. First, I want to give a little background about cells. All organisms originated from a common ancestral cell about three and a half billion years ago. And according to the theory of endosymbiosis, Eukaryotic cells originated from chloroplasts and mitochondria taking residence in a larger cell about one and a half billion years ago. There are two cell types we know of today. One of them is prokaryotic and the second one is eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells are unicellular they do not have a nucleus, instead they have a nucleoid region with naked free DNA. They have smaller ribosomes and contain no membrane-bound organelles in cytosol. Some examples of prokaryotic cells would be bacteria or amoeba. Moving on, we have eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are multicellular. They contain a nucleus with DNA wrapped in histone proteins to create chromosomes. They have significantly larger ribosomes and contain membrane-bound organelles binding in the cytoplasm. Some examples of eukaryotic cells would be plants, animals, or fungi. Here is an example of a prokaryotic cell, bacteria. The outer area will be the capsule, the in-between between the plasma membrane of the capsule and the cell wall, and the one touching the cytosol is the plasma membrane. As you can see that the bacterial cell, which is a prokaryotic cell, does not have a nucleus. Instead, it has a nucleoid region with free and naked DNA. And in the bacterial cell, there are significantly smaller ribosomes and no membrane-bound organelles. So in some bacteria, they can contain phyli on the outer edge so they can stick to walls and some bacterial cells will have a flagellum. Here is a model of a eukaryotic plant cell. Plant cells have cell walls, while animal cells do not. They also contain chloroplasts, which contain chlorophyll, while animal cells do not. Chloroplasts do photosynthesis, which converts sunlight to energy, because plant cells cannot eat, unlike animal cells. Plant cells also have larger vacuoles for water storage, while animal cells have significantly smaller ones. Plant cells also do not show that many centrioles because they do not contain much cell division, unlike animal cells that do a lot of cell division. Here is a model of eukaryotic animal cells. Animal cells do not contain a cell wall, instead they contain a plasma membrane. Animal cells also do not have chloroplasts, therefore they cannot convert sunlight to energy. Instead, they must take in air and convert it to energy using cellular respiration in the mitochondria. Animal cells also have smaller vacuoles and they have prominent centrioles and centrosomes since they do a lot of cell division. There are different types of animal cells there's adipose, epithelial, muscle cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, and nerve cells. Muscle cells tend to have more mitochondria, and depending on if you're an athlete or if you use a lot of your muscles, you will have more mitochondria. to list the organelle functions, starting with the nucleus. The nucleus contains DNA and has chromosomes wrapped with special proteins to, to a chromatin network. It's surrounded by a nuclear envelope that's selectively permeable and contains pores that let's transport in and out of the nucleus. For example, mRNA is moved from the nucleus out to the endoplasmic reticulum to the ribosome. Next is the nucleolus. It contains ribosomal RNA and it's synthesized. 
large and small subunits of ribosomes are assembled. Next are ribosomes. Ribosomes are protein factories, which means that they create proteins. They can either be free in the cytoplasm or be bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. If they are free ribosomes, those proteins are for the cell. If they are bound to the organelle, they are being transported out of the cell. The next set of organelles would be the protosome and the endomembrane system, which isn't a specific organelle. Starting with peroxisomes, they are found in plant and animal cells. They basically detoxify alcohol and liver cells and contain catalase, which converts hydrogen peroxide into water. The endomembrane system is a system filled with different types of organelles. But in general, the endomembrane system regulates protein traffic, performs metabolic functions in cells. The endomembrane system contains the nuclear envelope, rough ER, smooth ER, the Golgi apparatus, vesicles, vacuoles, and the plasma membrane. Moving on, I'm going to talk about the endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is basically member a membranous system of channels and plasma sacs in the cytoplasm. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth and rough ER. First, I'm gonna start with the rough ER. The rough ER has attached ribosomes and it's involved with the production of proteins inside the cell or outside the cell. Next, I'm gonna talk about smooth ER. These assist with the synthesis of hormones or lipids. They detoxify drugs and poison from the body and helps facilitate muscle contraction with the storage of Ca++ ions. Next, I'm gonna talk about the Golgi apparatus and the lysosomes. Starting with the Golgi apparatus, they are also flat in membrane sacs surrounded by vesicles. But Gol the Golgi apparatus processes and packages substances produced in the rough ER. They also secrete substances inside the cell or outside to the surface of the cell. Lysosomes are sacs of digestive enzymes. This is where the main site of intracellular digestion happens. It helps program cell death or apoptosis, and it helps the cell renew continually. Next, I'm going to talk about the mitochondria, vacuoles, and chloroplasts. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It is the site of cellular respiration, and they contain their own DNA. Moving on to vacuoles. Vacuoles are membrane-bound organelles used for storage. For example, water is stored in a vacuole. Mature plants have significantly larger vacuoles, and as I've said before, animal cells have smaller vacuoles than plant cells. Chloroplasts are found in plants and algae only. They contain a green pigment called chlorophyll, which makes it green, and they do photosynthesis where they take in sunlight to convert into energy. Next, I'm going to talk about the cytoskeleton, microtubules, and microfilaments. So the cytoskeleton includes the microtubules and microfilaments. The cytoskeleton basically helps maintain the shape and position of the cell. The microtubules are hollow tubes that make up the cilia, the flagella, and the spindle fibers. The microfilaments help support the shape of the cell. And that is the end of my presentation. Have a good day.